Hi everyone, Mr. Morgan Lewis here at Family Martial Arts. Today I'm going to run through some techniques from the pattern Jun Gun, which is what the scene degrades are working on right now. I'm going to cover some basic movements from it, how to do them correctly, and I'm also going to go through some principle related stuff as well so that you know exactly what you should be doing in terms of whenever you do a line work movement or a pattern, you know exactly what is expected of all the techniques that you're doing. So, from here, I'm just going to cover a few of the movements that I think are quite, you know, quite challenging. Obviously, the entire pattern is challenging itself. However, there are certain moves in it that require specific timing and really, really looking at to understand them correctly. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is the ready position like this. Okay, and we're going to go into a L stance, reverse knife hand lead leg front snap kick and then a rear foot stance upward palm so i'm going to show you from this angle okay so the move we're going to do is left leg forward reverse knife hand snap kick rear foot stance upward palm okay now just like all moves okay it they all have their purpose for use in self-defense so it's really really important that you understand the technique as well as obviously how, how to put intent into it but first of all let's go through the technique so left leg to come forward, we're gonna go into the L stance. We're gonna chamber back to wrist, and we're doing back to wrist because the reverse knife hand, or ridge hand as it's also known as, is on the thumb side, which is the same as the inner forearm. So in theory, what it does is it backs the wrist here and it spins across like this, making it an outside of the chamber technique, okay? Again, refer to previous videos to cover the backs of wrist action so you understand it more. All right, so left leg forward, backs of wrist, L stance, reverse knife hand, okay? So this is just in front of you here with your thumb tucked, elbow pointing in tight. We've got our L stance, our distribution of 70-30, and we have our heels in line, okay? Now when you do this snap kick, everything where you are now stays put. So lead leg comes up, kicks, and down. Okay, now we're gonna go into rear foot stance, all right? Rear foot stance up with palm. The rear foot stance is like an L stance, but it's a lot shorter, okay? So what you do is you bring this hand as a fist back to your waist. As you do that, this one is coming through from the floor using the palm heel. And what's really important is, if I do it from this angle, is that when you actually step through and do this, that the heel of the front foot raises and the foot itself pulls in. As that happens, you're pretty much going into a 70-30 like position, but it's not quite the same distribution. All right, you still have to place emphasis on the back leg with this one, like this. Okay, so left leg coming forward, reverse knife hand, lead leg, snap kick, rear foot stance, upward palm. So again, you can see it's very similar to an L stance, just the heel is raised, pulling a lot tighter, and this one's like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna come forward and do it again. I'm gonna go here. Chamber up, reverse knife hand, snap kick, rear foot stance, upward palm. So you can see the dropping action I'm doing as I'm performing this move. So as I go into my back leg, I'm pulling the foot in, dropping down, this one at the same time. It's quite challenging because there's several moves at one go. Okay, so now this time we'll come forward with this one. So we're gonna go into the L stance again. Reverse knife hand, again, keeping the thumb tucked. Whenever you do a knife hand or a rich hand technique, Thumb always tucked, never hanging to the side. But when you do the upward palm, it's to the side because you're having to use the palm heel. So you go there, you go lead leg kick, which is about knee or shin height, okay? And then from the back leg, rear foot stance, upward palm. It's quite difficult to understand at first, so I'll do it again a bit slower, but then I'll show you the speed you should be doing it, okay? So it's here, one, two. So this closes up. This one's moving, the legs are moving as well. Here, like so. One more time from this angle, okay? So it's one, two, and then three. It's really important that this finishes, this finishes, this finishes, and this finishes at the same time. Three or four different, different things in one go, like this, okay? Now, <clears throat> as mentioned before, okay, if you watched, uh, the other videos we've done, when we're talking about this kind of thing, intent is everything. So if you're gonna do any move from any pattern, it is absolutely fine to 
go like that, like that, and like that. To understand the diagrams, want to remember the moves. However, if you're gonna rely on that for self-defense, it's no good, all right, it's no good. So we need to practice with intent, meaning that all of the moves you are doing should be performed to be effective in self-defense, because ultimately, that's what you're learning it for, okay? Not just to remember the patterns, remember the formats, remember the sequences. I mean, that's that's your fo that's good for your focus, your hand-eye coordination. It's good for all of that kind of thing. But ultimately, it is geared towards being able to use it in self-defense. Okay. So from here, the movement should be one, two, three. Okay. One more time. So it's one, two, three. That way. Anytime you do any of these moves, they're putting in 100% effort into it. And you get a workout just by doing that itself, okay? So that's the first combination. So it's reverse knife hand, front snap kick, rear foot starts up with palm, and that's the first combination of June gun. Okay, so part two for this now is another combination which is, again, quite challenging, and to understand the technique is really, really, really important. So. For this one, when I explain it, I'm gonna try and give you a scenario that you can think about whilst doing it. Not necessarily showing you an application at this point because we have done applications in lessons, but um, I'll give you an example of what might be happening so that it's, it makes it easier for you to picture what you're doing and why you're doing it, okay? So, <clears throat> the movement is, I'm gonna do this to the side to make it easier, okay? You can do this forward in, you know, but I want you to just see, first of all, how I'm doing it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go into my uh, ready position here. So the first move is a back fist in L stance. Now, back fist is a move that's interchangeable from your chamber because it depends on where you are and what position you're in before you do the back fist. Well, from here, because I'm going from ready position, I'm gonna do it with a back to wrist action, okay? So back to wrist, hand on the outside, flicks across, okay? So I'm gonna go chamber, L stance, back fist. Okay, so it's temple height, okay, elbow pointing down. I'm using these two knuckles, so the index and the middle finger knuckles, okay? And from there, what I'm gonna have my, my reaction now, what I'm gonna do is, I want you to imagine that someone has just grabbed your wrist, like that, okay? I want you to snatch that hand back. So to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop your hand pinky side first towards the floor. We're not gonna go like this and turn it over. Not exactly, no. We're gonna turn it inwards. And the reason we're doing that is so that if someone was grabbing you like that, it makes it easier to cause the spread between the thumb and the index finger, especially if you do it quite fast, which you would do. So from here, you get grabbed. Imagine that. You turn your foot, the hand goes down, my hip turns, and we get this, okay? So you've gone back fist, and we, we, call, we tend to call this a release, because that's what we think of it as, all right? So the foot turns, the arm drops, there. Now when you do this, be careful not to let the foot jump out, because that will compromise what we're gonna do next, all right? So you go one, two. Now I'm not going all the way around here, because I don't want my back to show my target, I'm just doing it in front. So my, I'm still protected by this side of my, my, of my body. Now, from here, this is where this foot moves out into walking style. So you can see this one hasn't actually moved, okay? So, one, two. So what I'm gonna do is move this foot, I'm gonna raise the toes, so I go onto my heel, and as I do that, I'm gonna let my body fall, almost, into a reverse punch, like this. So again, you imagine your opponent's grabbed you, okay? You get your hand back, and then you return the strike as such, okay? Now, I'll do it from this angle. So, we're gonna go this way this time, ready? Back fist, okay, so what do we do? We imagine we grab pinky side, twisting towards the floor. So you can see, palm up, foot turns. Now my foot moves out into walking stance. Not this one, this one does not move, it just turns, okay? Move the foot out, reverse punch. And what's really important if you watch carefully is that the hand and the foot on the punch finish at the exact same time, I do it really slow, but like this. They finish at the same time. And that's what adds to the effect of the technique. Not just obviously putting intent into it, but actually making the technique work together. So for instance, if you went one, two, then three. 
It's not going to be anywhere near as effective as doing both moves at the same time. Okay? So, that's a principle to remember as well. Making sure that your timing is on point. So this time I'll do it a couple of times going towards you. So, L stance, back fist, release, move the foot. You Now from here you'll be able to see how wide the legs are. So shoulder width wide and I still go into a walking stance, okay? With a reverse punch. So now when I go forward, this one will be the back fist, so I put it back into a chamber, go one, two, and three. Okay, so I want you to try that drill, okay? Do it from the various angles. If you've got a mirror, okay, you can use the mirror to help you to see what your hands are doing. But practice those three moves. Remember, intent, technique, accuracy, everything in between, okay? So now we're gonna go to a third and final combination that we're gonna run through. Okay, so the third and final part of this uh, drill to do with Jun Gun is to go through double forearm, measure, side punch, side kick, and land here again. I'm gonna do it a few times this way and a few times this way. But first of all, we're gonna go through the technique. I'll do it with this angle so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go forward with my, will be my right leg, okay? And I'm gonna go into ready position. And when we do the first move, the double forearm, you need to chamber to the side like this. Think of, when you do knife and guarding block, think of this, but nowhere near as far apart and down here, okay? Because what happens is when you do the double forearm, you get one arm do this, and one arm do this, but they both go at the same time, like this. So as that one swiss inwards like this, this one turns outwards, okay? Boom, okay? So we're gonna go with the right leg forward, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go walking stance and double forearm. So what I've got is my lead arm extended a bit, okay, with it temple height, and this one by the elbow, okay? We've gone through walking stance before, so remember that. All right, now we're gonna measure with the inside hand. Now watch my foot, I'm gonna pull it in, but I'm not gonna do this. Whoa, I'm not gonna do that. Too much twisting, off balance. I'm gonna bring it to the other foot. So I'm gonna measure with the inside hand, okay? Pull the foot in, so I've got reaction hand, and I've got this foot coming in up on the ball of the foot. And then I'm gonna go into L stance, and side punch, okay? So 70, 30, one and a half shoulder, it's in length, yeah? The distribution and the, and the uh, heels in line as you've heard before and it's been mentioned, okay? This one's punching, this one's here. And this one, you've got to really pull that reaction hand back, okay? So from the beginning so far, you've got right leg forward, double forearm, measure, side punch. After side punch, side kick. If you think about it that way, side punch, side kick, Makes a nice little easy to remember the drill, okay? So from the back leg, you now chamber up, pulling the guard in, okay? Side kick, landing with the forearm again. So when you do kicks in patterns, you we tend to place a lot of emphasis on keeping the guard up, and that's purely because of the kickboxing aspect as well. Um, many, many uh, styles have it so that their hands are back on, on the waist. That's just the preference, okay? We just do it with our guard up, all right? So from here, Going forward this time, towards you, ready? So, double forearm, measure, side punch, side kick. So pulling the guard in, chambering up and pivoting. You don't have to kick mega, mega high, okay? Just across the middle will be fine. But then you go to re-chamber, put your arms down again, and then go back to here, so that you can perform it on the other side. I'll do it twice coming forward this time. Pay attention to the amount of intent and into the technique there is, because as mentioned with all the others, it's really important that when you practice something, it has intent, okay? So, double forearm, boom, measure, side punch, side kick, down. So that's one, and then we go measure on this side. So remember, it's the inside hand that does the work. Side punch, side kick, and then here, and then here again. Okay, and then back to that ready position. Okay, so you had the reverse knife hand, front snap kick, rear foot starts up with palm. You had the back fist, release, slip out and punch. And you also have just had the double forearm measure, side punch, side kick, double forearm again. So what I'm gonna quickly do is run through each move or each combo one more time, lots of power, so you can see what you gotta do. So here's the first one. Okay? 
Here's the second one. Okay, and then the third and final one. Okay, so practice those three combinations. Obviously, there is a lot more movements in Jungan. However, I personally believe that those three parts need consistent practice to make them fluid, accurate, timed, okay, and ultimately effective. All right, so practice those as best you can. Let us know you get on in the comments, like and share the video, and stay tuned for more pattern-related content in future videos. But for now, take care of yourselves. Practice hard and lots of good concentration. All right? Take care.